Key Lagos is a small private island off the southern end of Key Chapel. The sandy landmass, even with a massive three-story edifice that can be seen from a distance, is more of a fishing camp than it is a luxury stay. That's because the building remains under construction. It is here that two men were shot and killed in the early hours of this morning. One of them is said to be the caretaker of the property. The other is identified as 42-year-old Gabriel Escalante, a well-known fisherman in Ladyville. I know him, a respectable person. Not got no problem, nobody. Just like a father, a brother, a sister, no longer. No tragic, nobody in our society. Everybody's supposed to know. Everybody know Gabriel in our society. Just like my neighbor. Ne. Uh, my dad knows that well known seaman work hard for his family. Escalante had been accompanied by 48 year old Mark Sewell, as well as another unnamed individual. Sometime around 3 a.m., a vessel reportedly docked on the island. Its occupants disembarked and then proceeded toward the building. The trio was upstairs on the third floor socializing when things went terribly wrong. Sewell's cousin, Lisa Brandon, spoke with News 5 this evening. Because we don't expect nothing like this would ever happen to Mark. No Mark Sewell. No my cousin. No, he was killed along with... Um with Gabriel Escalante, I understand they worked together and they were friends as yes, well. They was, they were friends. They were real good friends. Like I said, they're from the village, so everybody know them guys. They're not, not no trouble people as far as I know, because I raised around my cousin, so I know Mark never did do no kind of drugs. That's for sure. Key Lagos is situated approximately four miles south of Key Cocker. When police visited that location just before dawn, they discovered the bullet riddled bodies of both men. According to Brandon, the other unidentified man was the one who sounded the alarm that there had been a deadly shooting. Yes, there was a third person. Um, he's the one that, that made the report to the police to let them know that what was happening on the island. So that's when we get the news about um, this morning, I think, like the time about 7. They, like a little bit after 6, we got the news about what happened to Mark. Yes, so that person, it would seem, escaped with his life. Yes, he did. He did. And thank God he did because, I mean, I guess nobody really may know what happened to Mark until somebody really go back on the island and check what probably happens. What Brandon admits to hearing in the wake of the double homicide is that a robbery had taken place in Key Cocker sometime prior to the armed assault on the lifelong friends. According to what I heard, that... This the person them was supposed to did the robbery, supposed to did a robbery in Kikaka first, and it was supposed to be an escape from Kikaka to that island and then try I guess Mark's supposed to know exactly who did it to him. He know exactly who shoot him because he know me I just entertain somebody upstairs our at his job. He wouldn't even invite somebody in if you know you know know that well then again you never know. Maybe he feel like somebody need rescue and he probably did it you know try to help somebody. Police on the other hand are saying that Sewell and Escalante were along with a third person and that individual may have been the one who turned on them with lethal force. That account is being disputed by friends and relatives of the deceased, corroborating the angle of a robbery on Key Cocker. They end up the gun that this key had before and key chapel, where Ali house there, and the gun and they kill two of the um, um, crew members that will watch the island. When they kill them, they go with the owner boat too. And they hear one and they end up they escape. I don't know how true it is, but that the words on the streets. That that what happened. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanika Etano.